Mai rā nō i te tiriti o Waitangi, kā rea nō kia pēnei rawa te kaha tau patu patu tia o te tahi take. Nō te whakatūnga mai o te ture takutai moana, i tā weko weko ai te taura here i Waiganui e tahi rōpū, i arā ke ai he rōpū hōu, i whānui hoki ai te kitea o ngā whakatumatuma me ngā whakatū pehu pehu huri noa i te motu. Hioa i ahakoa ia e rā āhuatanga katoa, kau mingo mingo tonu ana te nuinga o tātou, heaha ko ia pū te hāngai o te pire takutai moana hou ki a tātou o te ao Māori. Nō reira anei te tahi whakarāpo poto tanga pukukata mō te tahi mea, kā noho ture mai pea ki a tātou a te mutunga o te nei tau. Imagine the seabed in foreshore was pizza. Some say their pizza is privately owned and can't be touched, and Māori say, as tangata whenua, they never gave up their pizza ownership. The Marine Coastal Area Bill says, apart from the privately owned slices, we all own the pizza. But it does recognise that Māori have mana tuku iho, or customary rights, unless the Crown can prove that they let go of their slice in the past. The bill reinstates the right for Māori to go to court to claim that customary right. But to do so, they still have to prove continuous occupation since 1840. Proving continuous occupation remains difficult, but can now include issues of tikanga, transfer of territorial interests and shared occupation of hapu or iwi. Gaining customary marine title is the ultimate super supreme. While you don't own the land completely, you get the extra toppings like the right to claim minerals like iron ore, but not gold, silver, oil or uranium. You get veto and consultation rights over most resource consent applications. You also get ownership of newly discovered Tonga Tuturu and the right to engage in conservation processes, concessions and marine mammal watching permits. You still have the right to bypass the court process and to negotiate directly with the Crown. But whatever you do, public access has to be maintained. You can't take that. I need to have access. So while the Marine and Coastal Area Bill might not be to everyone's taste, many say it's the best deal going so far. Just goes to show you can have your pizza and eat it too. But I'm absolutely positive our guest today will be able to shed some light on this contentious issue. Jody. Kia ora Scotty. Joining me today is the Māori Party's Chief Whip, Te Urero Flavel. It was his job to keep the members of the party in line. No easy task as the party has endured a very public split with one of its members. Kia ora. Kia ora Jody. What did you think of that piece that you saw about the pizza? Do you think that's an accurate reflection? I think uh, there's a few things that could have been added in here and there to the pizza, uh, but um, in general there's some overview things that are, that are pretty accurate. Other than that, there are some things that needed a, a little bit more explanation, I think. Like what? Where would you start? Uh, well, uh, just a little bit more in-depth information mm. about, uh, about the whole scenario. I mean, it's easy enough to talk like that about a pizza, but when you're actually talking about rights, uh, about uh, property rights, uh, about um, uh, the obligations of one party versus the other one, uh, I think it opens up a little bit more information that needs to be to given out to people, and, and I suppose that's, that's what we've been attempting to do um, ever since this bill came back and came to Parliament. How do you feel about where we're at with the bill at the moment? Uh, I think that, well, it's done its second reading and that uh, we're on track to where we wanted it to, to be in terms of the Māori Party. We set a time frame with the uh, Attorney General um, well over um, 12 months ago about how we would roll it out and it's all coming to, to pass. Uh, this next week will be committee stages where we go through each one clause by clause and ability for all parliamentarians to have a say about each clause and what's wrong with it, what's right with it. And then finally third reading maybe in the next, um, within the month. What was your reaction to Horni Harawada's speech when he called it a racist piece of legislation? Well, that was Horni talking, so um, sometimes we expect that from Horni. Is it what you expected, given there was a lot of talk about a special deal that had been arranged between Horni and the Māori Party? I uh, didn't know what to expect, to be truthful. I mean, we did have an arrangement where we wouldn't um, um, basically slag off one another. Um, so he did his speech, uh, he did... He did, uh, from time to time, uh, time take a, uh, a swipe at our leadership and, and uh, the party as a whole. Um, so, I mean, that's what happened. It's a matter of fact now, so we just move on. What does that do for your wairua when you hear him sit there and call it a racist piece of legislation? Well, 
um, just expect that from Hone, but I mean, what's most important is that we're doing what we said we would do. Uh, the key things that the Māori Party said right from the very start, and what motivated me from the very start too about this whole bill, and even moving into the Māori Party and being a part of the whole process was, was number one, that I, like many New Zealanders, felt it was inappropriate that uh, a right to go to court was taken away from us in the first instance, and number two, that the government of the day confiscated a property right. Uh, the Māori Party, ever since we went into Parliament, said that we wanted to do two things. Number one was to repeal the Act, such that our people would be able to uh, go back to uh, the, 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 um, uh, the situation around the Ngāti Apa case and allow um, our people to go either directly to, to the government and negotiate a property right, a customary ownership right, uh, or go to the courts. And the most important thing was that it's taken out of the Crown hands and therefore uh, allows our people to go back and test the issues of customary ownership. That's what we're on about and that, that is pretty much what we're attempting to do with this, this, bill, this, sorry, this legislation. So you see it as a victory for the Māori Party? Well, I, I, I take it as a, an honouring of a commitment that we take, uh, that we gave to our people from the very start when we went into Parliament, and certainly uh, what we've uh, put in front of our people ever since we've entered in the arrangement with the National Party. In Hone's speech, he said the summary of the Māori submissions on the Takutai Moana Bill say 70, 72 submissions were received, 71 opposed. Do you accept that? Well, I, can't, I haven't got the stats in front of me. I think there's a few more, actually, that came in. Uh, talking about Māori, Māori uh, submitters. Māori submitters. There's a huge number of submitters. Um, and, of course, you've got uh, people at both ends of the scale. On one hand, you had thousands of, uh, of Pākehā submitters saying, you're giving the Māoris too much. And on the other, other end, as you'd expect, is Iwi saying, well... We're not getting enough, some of them at least. And in the middle is a huge chunk of people who never came through the door, which is probably going to happen, not going to happen at a, sorry, at a select committee process because most people don't come to the select committee process to tell you they support something. So in the end, I mean, it was pretty much to expect it. And if you've got people at one end of the spectrum and the other end who both agree on something and yet uh, for different reasons, then probably the bulk in the middle are probably right. Do you stand by your commitment? To, you put out a press release the other week saying that you, ha you are truly representing... Uh, the people of Waiareke. Do you still stand by that? Uh, well, they, you had 12 hui, they've oh. told you to carry on. Uh, well, I, I, what I'm saying is that uh, not only those, those who were, that was a quick road show in terms of just giving information out again in the time that we had. I mean, I've, I've been around the electorate for the last, uh, at least uh, two, maybe three times for the last uh, uh, last year, uh, telling our people that this was one of a, a key platform. We needed to get it right and, in, and making sure to engage as many of the people who came to Ahui. So that wasn't one. But um, in terms of the feedback I've had from my electorate and from all of the branches, the feedback that I've had is that we have uh, support for this legislation legislation to go through for, for my stand in terms of Wairiki. How much damage do you think Horni Harawira has actually done to the Māori Party? Uh, well, we've sort of gone past that now because Hone is not with us anymore and what we're attempting to do is start building again uh, the base uh, from the Taitokoro at least and the rest of us uh, feel uh, that we, we're going to carry on doing the same stuff we've been doing. Hard work, put the head down and focus on the issues that are important to our people. The seabed and foreshore issue in terms of the polling that we've done is an, is an issue but it's not the main issue at the moment and in terms of the current environment with Christchurch and petrol prices and food, we've got to try and get back to influencing the government about making changes that impact on our people. That's what we want to concentrate on. Why haven't you talked about your relationship with Horni Harawira and how it's all fallen apart? In you guys have known each other for 40 years. Oh, well, I mean, uh, Horni and I had an opportunity to talk when we and we did. We took that opportunity, I don't know, maybe a month ago. We talked to each other and uh, just like we're talking now, uh, we set out some issues and in the end we ended up in front of a, a panel that at least heard my discussion and I put it to that panel to say that, um, you know, relationships had broken down, uh, that uh, elements of trust had been lost and um, unfortunately Horni never showed to respond to some of the questions that were put. So all the rest is history. Now he's moved on, we've moved on, and that's where we're heading. Are you prepared to stand somebody against Hone and Te Tai Tokiro? I, I can't answer that to be truthful because it's not my decision. Uh, that's a decision that the, um, uh, that the National Council will take. And in the end, we've, we're still bound. Uh, we uh, want to act uh, with an element of integrity of this because we made some agreements with Hone, um, some 
two weeks ago to say that we wouldn't slag him off, we wouldn't stand candidates in the Taitukaro, he wouldn't stand candidates in, in, the, in our electorates, um, and other bits and pieces of, of um, things that we agreed on. But, Surely um, that's all over now, given that he did slag you off in the House, and then he's continued to do that on his iMarika website. He called you spiteful. Oh, I, I'm, I'm glad you picked that up. But in the end, the decision is, is not mine. Um, I'm, I'm just a member of the party, and uh, in the end, the National Council will make a decision um, on behalf of, of our um, membership and uh, my role is to concentrate on issues in Parliament. Your role as Chief Whip, isn't it, to keep members of the party on party message? No, it's not actually. Uh, what is it? The, the, the role of, of a whip in terms of general parliamentary process is certainly to carry out the wishes of the, of the leaders, uh, to organise within the House. It's, it's pretty specific for the other parties. Our role is different um, because uh, I'd, I'd, I'd put to you that uh, the people that are under the Māori Party banner are leaders in their own right and I'm not about to go and tell them how they should or shouldn't do it. And my role, I see my role uh, um, and it's not because of the whip, just happens to be the personalities that we have, is to try and make sure that we, we maintain an element of uh, cohesion, of kotahitanga, uh, of looking after each other and our whānau, uh, to make sure that we pick up on the gaps that we might have with respect to just practical things like who's in the house, but also um, just maintain that unity as best we can, as best as I can, knowing full well that we've got... Uh, uh, used to be five, now four dynamic people who are out to do the very best that we can for our people. At the end of the day, Horney didn't vote. What do you think of that? Um, <laughs> good ask Horney about that. That's nothing to do with me. He's not a part of our party anymore. And if I suppose the question would have been, if he was in the party, would, have been, would he have been in the House to carry out a vote on the part of the Māori Party? The answer would be yes, because that's how we organise ourselves. But now I suppose he's learning about, uh, I suppose, the realities of, of being an independent. Huni has been incredibly vocal about the split with the Māori Party. You have not. People that I have talked to have said this has been the making of you as a potential leader for the Māori Party. How do you see that? Well, that's a view from some. I mean, there's a lot of uh, water to go under the bridge um, as we move into the future. Um, I'm not going to speculate on that at the end of the day. I'm Are you in training part. for it? I've been in training ever since I was born, uh, and uh, I've had leadership roles throughout my career. Um, so uh, it's not as if I, uh, um, I'm, I don't feel confident in my ability to take that on, but that's, that's down the road. I'm absolutely by, behind our leadership that we have at the moment. I will stay loyal to them until the uh, other decisions are made, either uh, for or by them. Um, and um, until that happens, I stay as, uh, in my position, and I'm going to be working hard to make sure I maintain my position in Wairiki uh, and maintain the kotei of the Māori Party through to the next election and beyond. What do you think the Māori Party needs to do to convince people who may have thought the Māori Party wasn't delivering for them what they wanted over foreshore and seabed? I think the, one of the key things that um, we've got to make sure that we do is, is, is certainly uh, give um, people more information. We need to present our case uh, as much as possible in probably easier language that people can understand. And I mean, bills like uh, Forsham and Seabird are pretty, some, of the, some parts are technical enough, but we've got the message that um, it's the, the issues to do with, with Hone has been some distraction, so we've certainly got to make sure that uh, we present our, our cases a lot more. But the, the downside is we've got two ministers and we can't do the road shows like we used to because we are tied up. There's only four of us. Now there's only two of us that do all the house duty. We can't do the things we used to do in opposition, so it's pretty hard. Um, but just, I mean... Has all of this actually been a wake-up call for the Māori Party that you are actually government? No, not at all. We knew about that, we knew about that within the first week, uh, especially when the issues were presented to us about how we might um, work in a relationship with the national government as we work through things. But um, it's, it's, it means that we can refocus now. We've dealt with the issue. Um, we made a commitment uh, to Hornet. We will leave that there. And from here on in, um, we just want to re uh, refocus as the election comes up in the next uh, eight or nine months and really work hard to collect all the seats that are not in the Māori Party hands at the moment. That's where we want to put our energy. We know we're not always perfect, but we, I can say to you honestly that we're giving it the best uh, shot with that we can all of the time, um, and that we want to make sure that we honour the commitment that our people made to us um, by sending us to Parliament in the best interests of our people. Kia ora, Thank you very much for coming on to the programme. Kia ora, Jody. Kia ora. Kia ora, Scotty.